Drivers take precautions, heed the warnings. This is not a good time to be on the roads because the ground is saturated. And what that does is even if it's only a few inches of rain, it can have a significant impact on corroding bridges, roads, and making the situation dangerous. We've been working around the clock to recover from the last storm earlier this week before the one that is unfolding right now. And many of our personnel, fortunately, are pre-positioned for this next storm as well. Uh, with respect to Long Island, I've been in close contact again with County Executive of Suffolk County, Ed Romain, and all the local leaders on Long Island. My team's been very engaged with them. Yesterday, I issued a letter to the Army Corps of Engineers calling on them to take a greater role in the recovery process. So what we're concerned about tonight and tomorrow morning uh, is that. And now our attention turns to Western New York and the North Country, which are bracing for a classic lake effect snowstorm starting mid-Saturday. Uh, in anticipation of that storm, where well, we need to pre-deploy equipment and have contracts in place, and I'm calling up the National Guard, I'll be declaring a state of emergency for Western New York. We're monitoring the forecast as well to see whether that is be necessary for the North Country. We're expecting Jefferson County, uh, the Watertown area, to be hit, but we're watching that closely. Again, this allows us to contract for suppliers, get people pre-positioned, uh, get all the materials we need on the ground, and the National Guard, I've already called up, will be uh, positioned starting early tomorrow morning because we are expecting uh, very serious whiteout, blizzard-like conditions. Uh, and the forecasts of 20 inches may not sound like a lot to Western New Yorkers, but it could be falling at a heavy rate of two to three inches an hour. It'll affect visibility, uh, blizzard-like conditions, and the high winds, as locals know, and I certainly know this, it can create very dangerous situations with down tree limbs and you can't see a down power line on the road and it becomes very treacherous. So also we're concerned about safety on our roads, making sure that the throughway is free and clear, state roads are clear, and what I'm calling for is beginning at 9 a.m. Saturday morning is a ban on tandem trucks and empty tractor trailers all the way from the Rochester area, exit 56, to the Pennsylvania line. Again, we've seen from past storms, we're always learning lessons that if these tractor trailers overturn, it can jam up the traffic, leaving people in freezing cold weather vulnerable. And we want to make sure that we prevent that. So we're getting the warning out early so all the truckers and truckers associations can get the word out as well. And that will be in place for the duration of the storm. And we may be having to add additional travel bans, but not at this time. So please stay tuned for additional guidance on closures and anything else we're talking about. Storm preparation is what we talk about all the time here. They've been working all week to be prepared for the cleanup from the past storm, the imminent storm, and the storm we're predicting later tomorrow in western New York. So they're ready. Uh, our, emergency actor, our emergency operations centers are already activated. They've been on full, fully staffed since Wednesday, so we're keeping an eye on monitoring the situation. And just minutes ago, I just received the most up-to-date forecast from our, our state, New York State, state-of-the-art State Weather Risk Communication Center. And again, we've talked about this technology. It is incredibly precise, and we're really excited about being able to deploy that data in real time to help us manage the storms. We'll also be using cell phone alerts to notify New Yorkers about weather alerts, road closures, or other urgent concerns. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, yesterday I've activated the National Guard. It takes a little bit of time for them to be in place, and they'll all be in place tomorrow morning before the heavy snows start hitting western New York. Uh, 100 members will be on, on their way to Western New York with 25 vehicles. Utility crews already here, 11,000 crew members ready to store power wherever it comes down. Uh, actually, 5,500 are already in Western New York as we speak. We'll be adding more as necessary. And we're going to continue talking about how we can keep people safe. Warming shelters are being set up. I know the city of Buffalo is doing one. We're going to have state warm. Uh, centers, state-run centers as well. And again, what I've appreciated from New Yorkers, so many times we've given out these early warnings when the sun may be shining and it doesn't look bad, this is when you stock up on the groceries, get all the fixings for the chicken wings for your Sunday game, whatever you need to do, get them now so you're not caught with having to go out there during bad weather conditions as we've seen has happened so many times. People get trapped in their cars, whether it's the flooding, whether it's the heavy snowstorms. Uh, please don't go on the roads overnight. We're trying to get the salters out. You'll be hearing from our commissioner of DOT. We're trying to get the salters out, get the roads ready so they can be as safe as can be. 
check in on vulnerable friends and family. In fact, invite them over for a sleepover and have a slumber party and get ready for some pre-gaming as well. And it's going to be bitter cold. Bitter, bitter, bitter cold. Wind chills in the single digits. We haven't had a lot of that this winter, so we're not as accustomed as we are other years. Uh, so we'll do whatever you can to stay safe and warm. And for my fellow Buffalo Bills fans, here's the advice. If you have tickets to the game, listen to the forecast, drive safely back and forth. We don't anticipate changes right now, but stay tuned because the weather, Mother Nature is wildly unpredictable. If you don't have a ticket, you just want to come out and have some fun, this might be a better day just to sit home and uh, you know, open up, the, bring out the six pack has been advised by leaders in the past and watch the game from home. It'd be a lot safer and a lot warmer for sure and allow us to clear the roads easier when there's fewer people traveling on them. So right now we're in regular communications with uh, the county. I just spoke to County Executive Mark Polencars. Uh, I have communication with the NFL. We're talking to Bill Security uh, regarding preparations for the game, making sure we're doing everything in our power uh, to keep people safe for the game. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Commissioner Bray for any additional details. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Uh, as the governor said, it's a statewide event. We're particularly concerned Saturday into Sunday uh, about wind, whiteout conditions, and cold in the Buffalo area and the Watertown area. Um, I just want to give some safety tips uh, for individuals. Um, one, because of the wind gusts, we do expect that some people will lose power. We're uh, predicting wind gusts up to 65 miles an hour uh, off of the two lakes. Uh, if you lose power and you have a generator, make sure that you use that generator safely. That means outside of your home, at least 10 feet from your home, never inside your home, not in your garage. Uh, make sure you do not use uh, like a gas stove for heating that's unsafe. Both uh, misuse of a generator and use of a gas stove can cause carbon monoxide poisoning. We do see an increase in carbon monoxide poisoning and death related to winter storms. Um, if you lose power and you don't have a generator, the right thing to do is to go to a single room in your home, close the doors, make sure all the people in your home are in the same room with your pets uh, to, to huddle together, um, bundle up as, as many layers of blankets and clothes as you can um, do and as you have. Um, and to remember that if you lose power, it may not be safe to go out to seek um, shelter somewhere else during the storm. If there are active whiteout conditions, not only should you not drive in those, but you shouldn't be walking in whiteout conditions as well. Um, so single room inside your home. Uh, in terms of car safety, if you're going to be driving, make sure that you have some snacks, some water, uh, make sure that you have extra blankets. Uh, if you do get stuck in your car, remember uh, that if you keep your car running uh, and your tailpipe gets clogged, that can cause carbon monoxide poisoning inside your vehicle. So you want to turn your car on, heat it up, turn your car off, uh, and, and keep it mostly off and, and make sure your tailpipe is clear. For folks with vulnerable family members, vulnerable neighbors, if you have someone in your life that you usually call to check in on them and ask, are they okay? Today is a good day to call them and invite them over to your house for the weekend uh, to take that uh, checking on our neighbors, checking on our family members uh, a step further uh, and invite them over to spend the storm with you in your home. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner of Transportation, Marie Therese Dominguez, uh, to talk about details on the travel and traffic planning. Hello, Governor uh, and Commissioner Bray. Thank you very much. Um, DOT, State DOT operations team has been working 24 seven in preparation for this storm. Uh, our mechanics and our highway maintenance crews are working extremely hard to make sure that all of our equipment is in good working order. Uh, all of our residencies across the state are staffed up for 24 seven operations and all, certainly in all the impacted areas. Um, we've staged generators uh, across the state in the event that uh, and we have any traffic signal outages. That's just an example of some of the, uh, the equipment and the, uh, and the personnel that we've got ready. In coordination with the State Thruway Authority um, and the State Police, we're beginning at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. New York State DOT will be issuing a travel ban uh, on empty tractor trailers and tandem trucks 
on the following state routes in Western New York. The Buffalo Skyway, US Route 219, New York 400, I-190 north of the North Grand Island Bridge, I-290, I-990, the 33, the Kensington Expressway, I-86 in Chautauqua and Cattaraugus counties. Again, a ban will be in effect beginning on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on those state roadways strictly for empty tractor trailers and tandem trucks. In terms of people and equipment, DOT has more than 3,700 operators and supervisors available statewide, as well as 1,750 large and medium plow trucks, 340 graders, 52 tow plows, and 37 snow blowers. We're deploying additional personnel and equipment to Western New York to include an additional uh, 54 operators, 10 supervisors, five equipment operator instructors, 25 plows, three snowblowers, and an additional grader. If we need to send more, we certainly are in a position to do so, and we'll make those resource adjustments as needed. One thing that I would mention, much like uh, Commissioner Bray cautioned, uh, some safety tips here. If you're traveling to the city of Buffalo, recognizing that this is a there's a big game that's being played on Sunday. People are going to be traveling from Pennsylvania into the state of New York, and New Yorkers are certainly traveling uh, within Western New York and to Western New York. If you're going on Saturday to the game, travel early in the day. Uh, use caution. Watch the weather. Listen. Um, conditions could certainly deteriorate, as Commissioner Bray noted and the governor noted. Uh, we could be facing whiteout. It could it could turn quickly, so be prepared. Our DO teams are gonna be out clearing the roads as quickly as we possibly can. We're doing that in coordination with the city and the county resources as well, but the bottom line is that we're gonna do everything we can to make sure the roads remain safe and open. But make sure that you too, as drivers and users of the roadway system, give our folks enough leeway and enough space and enough berth to do their job. So don't crowd the plow, uh, give them enough space to actually let them get their work done because they're just doing it to make sure that you've got a safe roadway to, to use. The bottom line, Governor, is we're all hands on deck for this storm. Uh, we're prepared across the state uh, and ready to go. So thank you very much again. And I'll turn this over to uh, the director of the New York State Thruway, Frank Hoare. Thank you, Commissioner. And good afternoon, Governor. Uh, yes, uh, through it began uh, preparing uh, days ago for this event. We are already mobilizing and uh, moving uh, all our available resources and assets into, into place. Uh, the Buffalo Division Operations Center at our Buffalo headquarters will open up at 8 a.m. tomorrow. In, in addition, uh, the uh, Buffalo headquarters will be used as the regional operations center to stage for our uh, our colleagues in other uh, state, local, and county agencies. Uh, statewide, we have 700 operators and 400 pieces of equipment uh, ready to uh, uh, to work this weekend, and 118,000 tons of salt available to treat the roads. In the Buffalo Division, we have 106 large, medium duty tow plows, six uh, tow plows and 20 loaders, and two blowers with more than 37,000 tons of, of salt on hand. In addition, we are already begun, begun to move additional resources from our New York and Albany Division headquarters. And right now is six additional plows, three blowers, and operators and mechanics to back up the uh, Buffalo Division. And our Syracuse Division uh, is on standby to move any additional resources that are needed uh, throughout the, the this event. As Commissioner Dominguez uh, referred to, we have our, our ban on empty trailers and trucks and, and no tandems. That begin that ban begins at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, and it begins on the through, throughway at exit 46, which is Henrietta, and it continues uh, west of Buffalo and then down to the Pennsylvania state line. Again, I ask all our drivers out there to please, please respect that ban. It's done for the sole purpose of safety, and it's done based on weather conditions. Just a few days ago, we saw what happens when those bans were ignored. Uh, in the Western New York region, we had six 
uh, empty uh, tractor trailers tip over, which then completely barked, blocked the road and brought all traffic to a standstill until they could be pulled to the shoulder of the road. So please act responsibly, act respectfully, and, and honor that, that ban. Thank you very much. And Commissioner Sangos is next. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, as the governor mentioned in her remarks, uh, we're closely tracking the potential impacts of uh, a head-on uh, series of winds and rain on the south shore of Long Island, uh, akin to a few days ago where you had 25 to 30 miles an hour coming right from the southeast, which will push uh, some of those waves along uh, the south shore. So we're closely tracking the, the erosion uh, potential on that. Um, and we're working very closely with our, our county and town partners down there uh, to protect uh, health and property. As the governor mentioned, uh, she sent a letter yesterday to the Army Corps. Uh, since then, there's been uh, a robust discussion between the state officials and Army Corps officials on their steps forward. And we expect that coordination to continue until uh, we're out of the, uh, the, the woods on this particular rain event. Hmm. Thank you. At this point, we'll turn over to questions. Bernadette? Governor, do you agree with the DOJ's decision to pursue the death penalty in regards to the Tops killer who took the lives of 10 black Buffalo residents? I believe we're on topic questions right now, but I'll say yes. Do you have anything else you want to say? I mean, you are from Buffalo, and Western New York, of course, has been waiting for this decision. No, this uh, complies with the DOJ requirements for what constitutes a death penalty offense. And... Uh, this community is still reeling from the atrocity of 10 innocent people on May 14th in 2022 simply going about shopping and were targeted, targeted because of the color of their skin by a white supremacist who was radicalized online. So I support the Department of Justice. Okay. We're going we're gonna to go to Zoom for on-topic questions. Yes, reporters, please on Zoom, raise your hand and we will call on you as appropriate. Up first, we're going to go with John Campbell from the Gothamist. John, your mic is open. Hi, Governor. I was hoping you could uh, expand on what we might expect uh, for the, the rain event in, in New York City, Long Island, Hudson Valley. Are you expecting any sort of transit uh, delays or, or taking any action? What kind of preparations are you taking specifically for the, that part of the storm? No, again, as I mentioned at the outset, we have not taken our eye off the ball of what's happening here in the downstate area where I happen to be right now. Um, sun's shining, but by 6 o'clock tonight, we expect the rain to kick up. And again, the volume of rain is not the challenge. It is this much rain on top of the rainfall that already came. So the, uh, the rivers are already cresting and the ground is so saturated that it creates vulnerabilities for trees to come down or even compromise roads and bridges. So, so no, we're taking the downstate event very seriously. Also, you know, we've been very engaged in the restoration of property on Long Island, and that's why we're engaging the Army Corps of Engineers to say yes, which the resiliency plan you put in place for the coastline uh, the Fire Island area and other places that were so hard hit this time. You put it in place 10 years ago with Superstorm Sandy, uh, but over time, especially our September 29th storm of this year, really eroded and compromised the ability to hold back the ocean, hold back the water. So we're asking for them to go at it again with intensity, uh, cooperating with them, but we want them to move quickly. And this is the conversation I had with uh, County Executive Ed Romaine just yesterday. So, so no, we are keeping an eye on it. Uh, Commissioner Bray, is there anything else on the weather front that people should be aware of based on our up-to-the-minute information from our state-of-the-art oh, weather risk center? Thank you, Governor. I would just say uh, we do expect potential flash flooding in the Hudson Valley. We have sent a couple swift water teams down to pre-stage there from State Fire um, and our partner agencies. And so uh, I don't expect major transit disruptions at this point, uh, but to stay tuned, tell your local news for local road closures um, and to just take your time getting where you're going tonight. Don't rush it. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And our last uh, question, Governor, will come from 7 News in Buffalo. Your mic is open. Go ahead and open your mic. 
They are on mute, and I don't know if that's on our end or their end. Okay, you got me? Okay. This is actually 7 News in Watertown, New York. Um, this is Aaron Bischoff speaking. The North Country is still recovering from a very significant windstorm Tuesday night. Many without power for days, some still without power. And now here we go into another storm. So there's some, you know, anxiety there. You've mentioned a lot about Long Island and Western New York, sending resources there, implementing a travel ban in the Western New York area. What, if anything, is the state doing to help the North Country and the Watertown area? Right, and that's an important question to ask. We are, we are watching the weather patterns directly with respect to the North Country. Uh, we have said that this event that's going to hit Western New York will more likely simultaneously hit this part of the North Country. Again, we talked about this being a, a great a lake effect snow, two lakes, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, and Lake Ontario is what affects Watertown. Uh, we have our... Uh, commissioner in charge of the uh, PSC, Rory Christensen, who is monitoring the rest restoration of power, and we've been pushing our crews. We're not taking crews from that area. In fact, we're continuing to make sure they're doing everything they can to restore the power. Uh, so I'll let him answer any questions on the restoration efforts there, but also uh, the highways and any need to ban tandem or empty trucks on the highways up there. I'll leave that to uh, Commissioner Dominguez or Jackie, uh, Commissioner Bray. So uh, uh, we have not taken our eye off the ball in the North Country whatsoever. It's an important part of our state. We're in regular communication with their emergency personnel to be, make sure that we're ready for anything they need. We're ready, prepared to send National Guard there if necessary, if they get hit hard, and any uh, search and rescue teams that are necessary. So it's very much top of mind for us as well. Um, Commissioner. Christian. Thank you, Governor. So in the Watertown area, we currently have roughly uh, 2,100 uh, utility workers deployed working on over 100 restoration efforts right now. Uh, the number of outages has significantly declined. I think we only have roughly 3,000 uh, households without power, and uh, we're working ex uh, with the utilities to coordinate that restoration as quickly as possible. Um, from a pre-staging perspective, uh, we already have the workers there. Uh, we have have a total of 11,000 full-time employees deployed uh, throughout the state in anticipation of the storm. Uh, so we're taking restoration efforts very seriously, and uh, we're incorporating lessons learned from past events uh, to uh, both restore faster and also uh, limit the downtime uh, of any future outages. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Bray or Commissioner Dominguez, anything on uh, the tandem truck ban? Uh, if it's necessary on some of these state roads in the North Country. Uh, Governor, this is Marie Therese. Uh, at this point in time, we are not looking at an additional uh, uh, ban of empties or uh, tandem tractor trailers up in the North Country. I will tell you that we are uh, working very diligently, not only on the cleanup from this er the storm earlier in the week, um, and the effect that it's had on some of the roads. We had a number of trees that were down in Jefferson um, County in particular and up in the Watertown area. Um, and getting those trees cleared, roads back open, and um, any roadways that had been flooded, we've, we're clearing. Um, and we're prepared again. We're looking at cleaning drains, culverts, uh, et cetera, to make sure that as this new storm, uh, comes in that we're not only prepared, but we've got uh, the roadways uh, in good working order so that we can clear them as quickly as possible and our plows can get through. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Dominguez. Is there a follow-up? Well, no, what, what, what we're expecting in the North Country is about a foot of snow and winds up to 50 mile an hour gusts. Um, and so uh, certainly a storm, certainly uh, needing to get power back on and we'll, we'll keep monitoring it uh, but less intense than what we expect to see out in off of Lake, Lake Erie. Okay. Uh, with Thank that, you, I thank everyone for their participation today. Again, um, we're very concerned about the safety of all New Yorkers over the next couple of days and those who are choosing to venture out into a very significant playoff game this weekend. Uh, we're going to make the roads as safe as we possibly can. And for those who are thinking of traveling in from faraway places like Pennsylvania, as I've said before, the safest thing is probably just stay home and um, you'll be better off and safer for it. Go Bills. Thank you. Governor, does the state, does Mayor Adams still need as much migrant funding as he said prior? I mean, he just said that he's restoring cuts to, or intended cuts, to the NYPD, FDNY, 
uh, because they found savings with the migrant crisis. Do you think that's going to make you reevaluate how much money you're going to give in the budget? We are intensely focused on that question. Um, we had meetings on it yesterday, meetings all this weekend to try to do what we can. Last year, we had $1 billion allocated. At the time, the number of people who had come here was significantly lower, and it's very, very difficult to make a calculation because at the time, that seemed like it would be sufficient. Uh, we ended up approaching closer to $2 billion because of the enormous influx of individuals who found their way to New York State, New York City. So this is the, uh, the challenge of coming up with an estimate and reserving the right to make adjustments uh, mid-year if necessary, as we did uh, last year. So uh, it's an impre Im imprecise um, prediction. prediction. It's an imprecise pred prediction because the mayor doesn't know, we don't know, and we're very, very hopeful that the federal government will find a way to manage the border in a way that has not happened thus far because that is where the people are coming from and coming right to New York City. So um, we're, we're going to be there to help the mayor. It's a, it's a daunting challenge. He has done an enormous job, an incredible job in light of uh, these unprecedented challenges. As I've said before, this is the largest migration of humanity since World War II. So even comparing us to past administrations or even what happened under the Trump administration, it's all irrelevant. The volume has never, we've never seen this volume in our nation in its history. So that's what we're wrestling with. We try to be as precise as we can. We'll do our very best and uh, always having to make adjustments, the mayor ourselves, and so we don't know exactly how that's going to land. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Be safe.